Hey and welcome back to Toby's Real Skills with Toby. It's me. In today's video I want to talk about an, a useful extension which we can install on our Venus OS with a Raspberry Pi, which supposedly help you to install packages or reinstall packages after you've done a Venus OS update. Um, as you can remember from my previous updates, uh, from a, as you can remember from my previous videos, I was talking about installing kind of a widget so you can see the temperature of your Raspberry Pi processor. And I want to see if this might help. And I, funny enough, cool enough, I figured it out from the Off Grid Garage uh, channel. And his name is Andy. Hi, Andy. And I think it sounded like he's German living in Australia. I'm not sure about that German part, but he's living in Australia um, from his videos, what I understood. And I heard him <laughs> saying German things in between. So I guess. And uh, thanks, shout out to him. Uh, I found it on his channel somewhere. But it's not even from him. Uh, when you look here, um, this page uh, is on GitHub. This is an extension and uh, it is from, it should be Kevin Wintram. Thank you for this um, helpful feature or extension. So I hope it will help us a lot. It will help you a lot. And I have not installed it yet. I have not tested it yet. We'll do the installation together. I saw that Andy from Off Grid Garage did install it in a different way. We'll do a more remote style installation because I'm just lazy <laughs> to go and walk to the installation with a Raspberry Pi resides. And we'll do everything remote. If this is too complicated, feel free to just check out um, um, Andy's channel as well. Somewhere there's a video. Um, I'll try to post it also in the description below. I'll link it up here maybe. Um, and he was explaining it to do the installation basically with um, a USB stick. Um, let's jump right into it, I would say. And uh, the link to this GitHub from Kevin is um, also in the description below. That's what we're seeing here. There is a lot of stuff in here and there are some readme or some instructions below here. I was already reading a couple of them and he describes a blind install. It's That is exactly what um, Andy was doing and doing um, using a USB. Then there's another way to install it and there was even a link posted how we should download it via remote. So the only thing you need to do, you have to have enabled SIJ. There's a link how to do that on your Raspberry Pi with the Venus OS installation. And there was something written with, uh, you should have at least version 2.9. Yeah. That's not a problem if you're wondering how to update or upgrade to the latest possible version. Um, I just released a couple days, a couple weeks ago, the upgrade to 2.94, all up there. And uh, that should help you at least um, do all this installation. Um, maybe you are able to install it before. So what we do, what we will do, we'll connect now to the Raspberry Pi, Venus OS. We'll use our putty putty in our case. So that means I'm opening it up here right next to it, probably down here. So I'm opening it up here and let me double check just on the remote console. We'll refresh. It looks like we still have our Pi here. Awesome. And all we need to do is connect to the same IP address. As long as you know it, if you don't know the IP address, guys, if you have not enabled SSH, that's something you need to know. You need to figure that out first, otherwise you will fail. Um, how to figure out the IP address? You can, when you have a display connected to your Raspberry Pi, you can go into remote console. You can navigate to settings and then there is Ethernet Wi-Fi, depends on how you connected it. I've connected it through Wi-Fi and then I can see my IP address when I scroll down here. Pretty simple. All right, we'll connect. We'll connect to the Raspberry Pi using the super user root, using the password which you have assigned to it. You should remember this one. We will just use the get the first command, so there's three commands. I'll copy it with the keyboard, I marked it, and then I copied it with uh, Control C, and then right click in PuTTY, and then hit Enter. I 
And what happened in the background? It should have downloaded it. And decompressed it already. Now we'll move the setup helper latest to data setup helper. I'll do this one. I was curious about this. There are some packages in there, cool. And then now we'll just do the setup, as it says here. Choose an action. What do you want to have? <coughs> oh, wow, this is very comfortable. Thank you for this amazing um, coding. Available actions. Install, reinstall, uninstall, quit, display setup log. We want to do the install, so we'll have to use a I. Do installation. <coughs> Restart the GUI now, or I should do it manually later. No, we want to restart the GUI now. And we are done. Now changing to the GUI, to the console. Do reconnect. Wow, it looks similar. Let's see. Uh, as much as I remember, going to settings. And then it should be all the way down package package manager. And there it is. Nice. Cool. So there should be no active package except for the setup helper. And it found out it's the newest possible version. Cool. And then we have inactive packages. What else? We have micro SP, backup storage settings, cool. Inactive packages, and that's where we can go in and install new packages. Um, let's switch from here to page really quick. And you can see there, you know, I don't have connected a lot, but uh, I can see my battery state of charge. When I click on it, there's nothing happening. When I go back to menu, I have to go back again. Going down the package manager, and then I want to go inactive packages. One really cool thing I saw already was the GUI mode, GUI mods, um, and I want to install it. So it means add GUI mods, click proceed. Now it disappeared from from the list. Um, we'll go back, go to active packages, go in there, and now we see GUI mods, but we see it's in GitHub, it's not stored, and it's not installed. So we'll double click on this. We'll go in here, so now we can see there's a download down there. I'll do this one, click on download. There's, of course, a lot of more information. GitHub user, GitHub branch, or tag. I want to always have the latest, if possible. Is it good? I hope so. Oh, sorry, I have to click proceed. Yeah, this is a new f new kind of feature. I didn't see that one, okay. It didn't take a long time. You have to click download and proceed. That's kind of a little above coming up, like a little box popping up. Now we have stored version and we have to install. So double click on install. And now it asking me, because this is a pop-up. It's not a very good overlay, but it's a limited GUI, so I get it. Install requires GUI restart. Let's do it now. Cool. And when it, when it asks for GUI restart, it should just be the GUI itself. It should not restart an entire rasp Raspberry Pi. So when I click on reconnect, it's already back there. And one feature I figured out with this GUI mods, we'll can uh, click on some more release notes or more information about this in a second. Um, it does give you a different order. It does give you a different order in terms of settings or the first thing because that's usually what you want to know or what you, where you want to go, it looks like. And then notifications and everything is um, alphabetically sorted underneath there. That's what I understood. But when we now go to pages, and that's where it's interesting, it is it did change everything what's connected there. So you can see that now there's a little more different uh, um, information in here. So there's below uh, the pi process of temperature. It's or even decimal, wow. Then we have the PV charger, which is at the moment nothing's connected. Um, and then we have here the battery. When I double click on it, we get more information in here. So like get a state of charge, consumed, voltage, power, 
state is it is dechar discharging remaining time in current. Um, that is very nice. And when you now go back, you have the same also with the other tiles, basically. Let me see one more thing. Go away. No, there's nothing behind. Going back to menu. When you look for the GUI mods, it's also um, developed. It looks, looks like by Kevin. Thank you again, sir. This package provides the following modification. And there we can see what's in there and what, what this mod or this application does. Link is also in the description below, so you can research this if you want to. There are a couple other ones, and I want to go on one more. And that's a shutdown button. Um, we only have the capability to restart uh, the Raspberry Pi, but not properly shut down. So that's something I wanted to look at as well, going to inactive. inactive. Uh, packages, yeah, then I want to go, let's see, there's a lot of stuff. Oh, look at this, this is cool. Raspberry Pi temperature. I did all the work yesterday, oh no, I did all the work with the Raspberry Pi processor temperature, and here we have a package, that is cool, okay. Um, next update, I will use this package most likely. I have to read through all of them, but what I want to install is a shutdown monitor, I think, is that what it's called? Battery upgrade. All right, um, I Let's see, shutdown monitor. So there's also just a package shutdown monitor from Kevin. This software installs a possibility to perform a clean shutdown of the Venus OS via the menu settings. Systems. Great. Awesome. Let's do it. So we'll install the shutdown monitor, which means go in there, click proceed. Now it disappears from inactive inactive packages to active packages. I think you get the how it works then we select shutdown monitor we say download proceed now it's downloaded now we want to install proceed it's just a matter of a couple of seconds it's great oh. shutdown monitor install requires GUI restart we'll do it now now we can see the console is restarting we'll do a reconnect there it is and in theory we're going to settings and then general there was just a reboot button in the past right and now we do have this shutdown. Nice. So it's happening when we do a shutdown, which means we would go here and then do it, click it. It will shut down, but there will still be a very little tiny bit power consumption because you have to unplug the micro USB or you have a power switch. You have to cycle it one time. That's something you have to keep in mind. Cool. I have to do re more research on the other applications which I think is phenomenal. So, but that's that's all I wanted to show you. Um, there's this awesome setup helper and we'll do the test with the next version upgrade, um, 2.95 most likely. And as soon as we have this, we'll see if all those packages we can easily reinstall. And uh, thanks again for Kevin for doing such a great job. Thank you for Andy that um, you highlighted this and uh, doing everything via remote. I didn't have to go down to um, my Raspberry Pi because it's down in the garage. And uh, I mean, doing a shutdown would be counterproductive for me because <laughs> I have to go down there. I would rather do the restart if I can. I hope this is helpful for you. There is a ton of more um, on GitHub for Venus OS, which I try to understand what's up, what's going up there, what they have, what's useful for us, especially doing those firmware updates. That's very important that you have as little work to perform afterwards as possible. That would be the ideal case, but you can still modify it as needed and whatever you want to do. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Tschüss.